At a minimum, when you're setting up an instrument to make a measurement, you should validate that it's actually giving you reasonable results. So for this meat thermometer, we can look and see that the needle right now is pointing to somewhere that might match up with room temperature if we extended that scale around there. Now I'd like to see how it reads in the region of interest, the range from about 60 degrees up to about 90 degrees Celsius that corresponds to how well done my meat is. To do that, I'm going to take some hot water and put it in this cup. I don't know exactly what the temperature of the water is, but from playing with the uh, thermocouples, I know that water coming out of my kettle is probably somewhere between 85 and 95 degrees Celsius, give or take. So I'm going to go get the kettle down, pour some water in here and see what happens. I got my kettle, it's just boiled, and I'm pouring water into the cup. The indicator rises fairly quickly to start with, and then it slows down, and let's see where it gets to. Still moving, but pretty slowly. That looks like about half a division above the 190F mark. So that would be about 195F, or about 90 degrees Celsius. So that's a pretty believable number. I got 90 degrees Celsius. And I know that I applied somewhere in here a temperature somewhere between 85 and 95 is my best estimate. So somewhere along there, we've got that data point. This gives us an idea that the thermometer is functioning, it is giving a reasonable answer, and the value does go up when we apply a higher temperature. The indicated temperature is dropping with time, so if I knew what the temperature was inside the mug, I could add some more points to this graph. But I don't know what the temperature is inside the mug. In order to make a better calibration, do more than just validate that the thermometer works, but to actually assess the accuracy, I'd need to make sure that I knew the applied temperature, the temperature of the water in the cup, so that I could compare the measured temperature to what the temperature should be, the temperature of the water. So if I knew these values more accurately, as it cooled off, I could apply a 75 degree water bath, and if I got a value that was a little above this line with a slope of 1, well there's a little bit of an error there. Likewise, I could apply a temperature of 60 degrees and I might find that there was a little bit of an error there. If I did this repeatedly with known values for the applied temperature I'd wind up with a calibration that told me how my measured temperature varied from what I was actually trying to measure. Now in most cases if your instrumentation is any good you won't really see these errors when you draw a graph like that. That would be an error of say two and a half degrees Celsius. That's a pretty big error in your measurement system. So more likely your calibration relation will look something like this when you actually do the tests. And yes it's a straight line. That tells us that our measurement is working and things are going well and our errors are small. But if we want to understand those errors better, we really need to look at them by zooming in so that we just see the detail of how big is the error. So if we zoom in, we can look at, instead of plotting the measured temperature, we can plot the error. How different is the measured temperature from the applied temperature? Plot this value in here. It should be zero. If our measurement was perfect, all of our points would lie along that straight line right there. However, our measurement isn't going to be perfect. Inevitably, there's going to be some noise. So we might actually find that our data points look something like this. This tells us that our calibration, our instrumentation is pretty good, but we've got some noise 
and all of our data points are still within plus or minus one degree Celsius, so that's pretty good. On the other hand, we might find that all of our data points were bigger than the value indicated, that we had a positive error on all of these. This tells us that we've got an offset error. All of our measured values are about two degrees higher than the actual value. We could correct for that in calibration. We could move all of these down by taking our measured temperature and subtracting two from it. They'd all wind up back down on this line. So that's our calibration process. We can detect what the errors are and adjust how we make an estimate of the actual temperature based on the readout of the dial. Likewise, if we looked at our errors and we saw some points that looked like this, the error is increasing we might need a few more points in there to convince us that this was actually happening. This error is increasing with increasing temperature. So this isn't just a constant offset, this two degrees higher reading. This is a line tendency that's getting bigger and bigger as the temperature goes up. So this is a scale error. And we can adjust that to swing that line back up here, closer to the zero line. So if we wanted to have a calibrated temperature, if we wanted to make the best estimate of temperature that we could, we could take Tc, corrected or calibrated temperature, equal to some value A times the measured temperature plus some value B. A really should be close to 1, and B really should be close to 0. In this case, B is going to be negative 2. We're going to pull it down here with a negative 2. Here, in this case, A might be 1.02 to swing the 100 degree reading up by about 2 degrees. We can apply this same approach to calibration if our measured temperature, our measured quantity that we're, uh, that we're interested in is coming out in some other different form, for example as a voltage. If we use a TMP36 temperature transducer, then the output voltage depends on the input temperature according to a relationship that results in a value of 1 volt for 50 degrees Celsius and an additional 100 millivolts, another 0.1 volt, for every 10 degrees above that. So we'd see a voltage reading of 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.4, as we went from 50 up to 90 degrees Celsius. We can draw exactly the same type of graph if we're calibrating a TMP36 transducer. We can do exactly the same kind of error plot after converting this through the relationship over to temperature and we can do exactly the same calibration adjustment to fix errors like this. Always validate your measurement devices to make sure that they're actually working and give reasonable output numbers. If you don't do that you'll have a hard time troubleshooting your measurements. Make sure that you have additional confidence in the quality of the measurements by doing a calibration or referring to a manufacturer's calibration or specification that went along with the instrumentation that you bought.